Alrighty, so the first day, as you guys saw, the first day we got her home, we worked on some uh, basic recall. So basically just go on a walk, call her. You guys saw what we did in the last video. After that, the next day, we started practicing doing it other places, so around the house. I started out in sight, calling her, and then I got to the point where I would hide from her and call her, and she would have to find me using her sense of smell and hearing, probably just hearing, I'm guessing. She's right on five pounds today. So at five pounds, or in other words, 2,286 grams, that is a meal of about 120 grams per day for her ration of food. And of course, we'll watch her as I do with any of my dogs. I get an um, uh, approximate amount that I need to feed them, and then I watch them. If it looks like they're getting a little too fat, I'll reduce it. If they are getting a little on the thin side, I'll increase it. So I'll do the same with her. Obviously being a puppy, we're gonna let her get a little chubbier than we would my working dogs, but even for puppies, being obese isn't necessarily good. So we wanna feed her just right to where she's, she's getting all the nutrition she needs, but not so much excess that she's looking pot-bellied and, and chubby. So as you see, she's got that totally down. She's using her senses other than just eyes to find me when I call, and she's doing great. So no need to uh, spend much more time on that. Now let's move on to teaching her some new things. Of course, we're gonna, on a daily basis, once or twice, give her a call and practice that a little bit, but we're not gonna have that be our focus. So I created a list of different behaviors I wanted to teach the dog. You know, things like sit, get outside, bring it here, you know, a whole bunch of stuff. Get in there, you know, getting in a kennel, bringing some object or an animal back, retrieving, you know, things like that. And I put a word that goes with the, the behavior. Now I'm going to start teaching them. So I basically I pull up this list and I say, okay, which behavior am I going to teach? Now I did change the vocabulary a little bit so that certain activities are gonna have a different word than what the rest of my dogs know. So she'll know a slightly different language so that if I want to independently tell her to do something, I can tell just her without distracting boss. For her, certain commands are gonna have a different vocabulary than what the rest of my dogs understand. So first, I'm just showing her the food to get her interested, to know that we're gonna feed her now. As Soon as her butt hits the ground, Yes. A few moments later. Yes. As a girl. So as soon as it's very clear that she understands what we're doing, um, then I'm going to start pairing it with the sound. Come. Come, come. Oh, that's a good girl. That's a good girl. So we've we've taught her a second behavior. So in, adi in addition to sit, we've started teaching her uh, what I call look. So basically, I I throw a little piece of food and I point at it. Now the goal of with that is eventually when we're hunting, I want to be able to guide her by pointing, and which is a really vague thing. It's kind of hard for dogs to pick up exactly what you're pointing at but at least they can get a general direction. Hey, go that way, I see something. And to introduce her to that concept, we're doing it with food. So, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back and forth between tossing a little piece of food out, telling her where it is by pointing and saying, look, and then um, asking her to sit, which we've started the sit command now. So, I'm gonna take this little piece of food, you're gonna toss it where she won't see it. Look. Look. 
Look. Look. Look. Yes. Look. 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 Good. Yes. A few moments later. Look. Good. Yes. Drop. Yes. How's it going, girl? She's, she's a smart little pup. We've gone through the bag of treats, started out in the morning with one training session, had one in the middle of the day, which we didn't film, and then one at the end of the day. So she's done with her meal for today. We broke it up into three training sessions. Tomorrow I might be busy and only do two, or I might have extra time and do four. The key is that she eats the right amount of food in the 24 hours, and that she gets at least two training sessions for the day. Look. Look. Yes. Good girl. Drop. Yes. Look. Look. Good. Good. Look. 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 Good. Yes. Good girl. Good girl. A few moments later. Come. Come. That's a good girl. Okay, that's enough. We'll feed you some more later. You did a great job. Oh, you did a great job. Yes, you did. There's a great girl puppy. Oh, there's a little puppy. Oh, you did such a good job. Yes, oh, you did such a good job. Oh, I'm so proud. <laughs> She's a smart little sucker, huh? It's fun watching her think. Sometimes it's like frustrating, you know, certain things that seem really obvious she kind of struggles with, but then other times she just picks it up and boom, boom, boom. It's really cool watching her start to understand. So today we're going to do the first step of trailing training for little Miss uh, Bindi Spike. So what we're going to do with Bindi is we've got, this is just a bag of what I've been feeding Bindi and the mink both. It's a mixture of mostly muskrat. And um, I'm going to drag the bag along the ground to leave a scent trail. Then I'm going to leave little bits of muskrat along the way for her to find in the trail. And then at the end, there's another chunk um, for her to find at the very end. And there's a lot of chunks to find. It's not... She doesn't have to walk very far before there's another piece. So she's used to coming out here to go to the bathroom and then going back inside. So I'm actually going to use the command that we taught her, look, to get her started since she did pick up the smell, but then she lost interest pretty quick, thinking it was just, you know, a little little dribble of blood. It didn't mean anything. So I'm going to use the look sign or, or s signal to see if I can get her to find the first piece. Bindi, look. 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 Good, yes. Look, 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 good, good, good. Yes. A few inches later. Good girl. That's a good girl. That's a good girl. That's a good girl. Yeah, that's a good girl. That's a good girl. Yes. That's a good girl. Okay, so. What I thought was an easy trail was obviously not easy for her. So that's the thing with, uh, with training. 
Sometimes you think, oh, this will be easy, and what you thought would be easy ends up being very difficult. Sometimes what you think would be difficult ends up being easy. That's just kind of how it is. You have to trial and error. It's different with every animal. And you know, I mean, she's nine weeks old, so this is the first time she's ever done this, and she's only nine weeks old. So I tried to start with what I thought was as easy a situation as possible, and it still was a little on the hard side. So what am I gonna do next time? Next time, I'm gonna leave the, leave the pieces even closer together, and I'm gonna have the length of the trail probably half of the length that we just did. So I'll have the pieces even closer together with half the distance. Um, it's way better to start out, especially when you got a puppy this young, it's way better to start out too easy than it is to start out a little too difficult. Let me explain the whole name to her because there's quite a bit of background behind her name. So Bindi, um, where I get that name from, is my grandfather, back when I was a little kid, he had this rough, tough little red healer that he named Bindi. Another name for them are the Australian cattle dogs. Well, my grandfather uh, and my mom and, and you know all her siblings lived in Australia for something like 12 years, I, I think. My mom's whole growing up from a, a young kid until she became an adult was in Australia. My mom came back to the United States, met my dad, they got married, which brought the rest of her family back to the United States. So when they came back to the US, they had a little Australian red healer um, that they named Bindi. And Bindi was just the toughest little dog that you ever have seen. Man, she was a, she was a cow dog, a working cow dog. She worked all day working, uh, moving cattle, but she was just so rough and tough. She was too tough, in fact. If the cow run her over and like stepped on her, she would get up and just bite that cow. <laughs> like she was just rough, tough dog and she never seemed to get hurt. So anyway, that that's where the name Bindi comes from. And my grandfather passed away a couple years ago. And so it's, to me, it's kind of a, a special name because it reminds me of him. Calling her Bindi reminds me of him. Now, you may wonder where the, where the name Bindi comes from. Like, where did my grandpa get it from? Well, Bindi in Australia, um, what we in the U.S. usually call like a goat head or a puncture vine. In Australia, they call them Bindis or Bindi eyes. It's a plant that grows in really harsh, dry, barren, rocky type soil. Basically places that no other plant can survive in, they thrive in. That plant fits that dog perfectly. Just rough and rugged and tough and survivor, you know. So it was really cool that Bindi the dog lived up to its name. I thought that was pretty cool, you know, the analogy or the, the similarities between the dog and the plant. I thought, oh, what a cool name for my dog, you know, this rough, tough, you know, name. But it's a rough, tough name that sounds cute. There's a lot of rough, tough names that don't sound very feminine or cute. And she's a cute little feminine puppy. So it's, it's a nice combination of it being a soft, cutesy name that has a real rough, tough meaning. And, of course, like I said, it's special to me because it reminds me of my grandpa. Now... Um, the spike part, you might wonder, well, it makes logic sense, the spike on the bindi that pokes into your foot, yeah, bindi spike. Well, the spike actually comes from her heritage. So Gardner's Miss Spike, she had a puppy, and his name was Dramaside Spike. Dramaside Spike, he had a puppy, and his name was Lil Spike. Lil Spike had a puppy, and her name was... Bindi Spike. <laughs> so she's the fifth generation dog with Spike in her name. All of them leading back to and being named after Grand Champion Gardener Spike. Obviously, we're not going to run around calling her Bindi Spike all the time. We're going to call her Bindi. But her full name, and as far as her registered papers are concerned, uh, her, her registered name is going to be Bindi Spike. So when we did our survey, Bindi was actually the name that won, so it was convenient. It was the name that I liked the most, and I was really wanting to give her. But like I said, I felt like there was something missing, though. I was like, ah, I really like Bindi, but there's I need a little more. But Spike totally rounds it off.